ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في الله حق المجاهدة حتى أتاه اليقين فنصلي عليه في الأولين وفي الآخرين وفي الملئ الأعلى يا رب العالمين أوصيكم نفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل كما جاء في محكم التنزيل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون Dear brothers and sisters, we always begin with praise and gratitude because this is the core, this is the fundamental reality of one who appreciates where we came from and all of the favors and countless blessings that we soak up from birth until death is a blessing from the merciful, compassionate provider that is our Lord and provider. So we're grateful to Him. A life of gratitude is one that seeks to show that by learning who is our creator, who is our provider, who is our guide, knowing Him, knowing what does He want from us, what does He expect out of us. We are all given a trust in this life in which we're responsible for the soul and the body that it has been put in and we are all going to have to treat that soul and that body with the divine care that it was created for. And so we seek His guidance, we seek His forgiveness if we, as we will eventually all make mistakes and sin, so we ask His forgiveness. I bear witness that there is no deity and nothing worthy of worship except for God alone and I bear witness that Muhammad the son of Abdullah was his final messenger, his final prophet he sent to mankind so that all could realize infinite mercy in the bliss of eternal paradise. Today I want to talk and reflect upon this time we find ourselves in and what that means for us as Charlotte Muslims. So this is the first day of the Hijrah. Al Muharram, 1439. We now find ourselves in the year 1439 of the prophetic calendar. And so, the defining moment the Muslims all agreed upon by which we will use to start this calendar is the Hijrah, the migration of Muslims from Mecca to Medina. And what that was about was about Muslims going through years of persecution, oppression, living in a corrupt society with so many turmoil and so many difficult issues that they faced. And there was this community in the city of Yathrib that welcomed them. And they said, we will welcome you people to come live here and we will make the Prophet the leader of our city. We'll call it the city of the Prophet, al Medina. So the Muslims went there and that became the bedrock and the foundation for a healthy Muslim community. It began the community center of the growth of Islam and Muslims in world history through its final prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what does that mean for us? What is the best way to go about that? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said La Hijrata Ba'd Al Fatih After the Muslims entered Mecca and were miraculously uh, given this authority and all of the idols were destroyed and now there was pretty much no oppression and tyranny because so many people had become Muslim and the remaining people had realized it would make no sense to try to fight these people. So now there is no need to go travel to Medina for all of us which is what Hijrah really originally meant. And now we have chosen to live here so we live in a society that is not Muslim. There are great things about the Charlotte community. There's many good things about this society. Um, but there's also many bad things. It's not a Muslim society, so there are many realities in our community that are not guided by Islam and the most people are not Muslim. So how should we deal with that? You are now sitting in the beginnings, the transitional rental place at Countryside Montessori. 
where the Muslim Community Center, you see this uh, banner, Muslim Community Center of Charlotte, which is the first mosque Islamic Center project of the Northeast area. There is no mosque anywhere near here. And so we are starting and establishing a fresh new organization. So what we have decided as a community, those that have spearheaded this, is that we want to establish this community with a principled mission and vision that gives clear identity to what we as a people are doing here. And so we have a mission and a vision statement that today we will try to cover shortly because we have a very important point after the prayer that we want to encourage you all to take part in. So the first part of this mission is that in the sincere worship of God, we strive toward excellence in character, cultivating the American Muslim identity, working toward an upright society. This is what we are here doing. This is the mission. So what does that mean in sincere worship of God? In Surah Az-Zumr, in the second ayah, it says, it says, Indeed, we in the royal majestic plural. The scholar said, why does he sometimes refer to himself in this royal majestic we? Because what he's about to say after he uses we is that the action he's doing is representing some great king ruler representation of great action. So he says, we revealed this book to you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to all of those who would follow you for which purpose? Bilhaq, to establish truth and justice. Haq means truth, the ultimate truth of things, rather than falsehood. Haq also means the right of someone, hukuk, the rights. So it is there to establish truth and justice. So that's what we're here doing. But it cannot be done unless it is done according to the command. Worship God in sincere religious devotion. What does that mean, sincere? Sincere means, sincere means that one person who is worshiping, but for the purpose of what other people think. If what you're doing in worship is because what my uncle or my aunt or my father or my mother expect of me, then it's not worship. It is doing something for people. If you're doing it because this is my culture, this is what I am expected to do as a person in this culture that I've inherited from my land and my forefathers, then it is not sincere. Mukhlis Allahu means that you are worshipping God sincerely and the reason and the purpose by which you are doing what you're doing or saying what you're saying is only for His pleasure. Seeking His content. Seeking His favor. So that's why we do what we do. So we don't want an environment in our center here where people do things because they're worried about what people will think about them. They're doing things because they're concerned about what God thinks about them. Then the next portion says, in the natural progression, we strive toward excellence in character. We strive toward excellence in character. What does that mean? The Quran tells us, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا those who strive in our cause, we will guide them to our paths. And indeed God is with those who have excellence in their character. What does that mean? 
That means, as you are struggling and striving, you will find that in service of God, things will not always be comfortable for you. It will not always be the easiest way. But if you struggle and strive for it, seeking knowledge, seeking to perfect your character, He will guide you to His many paths. What are the paths? These paths are those of good character. Why, does, why do we know that? Because He concludes by saying, Indeed, He is with those who have excellence in character. The famous ayah, وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا he says, worship God alone and do not associate others with your worship. And if you do this, the natural consequence is that you will start to have excellence first and foremost to your mother and your father. Will be the qurba and to your family and to the orphans, and to the poor, and to your neighbors, and to your colleagues. What does this mean? If you are truly worshiping God, sincerely, then the natural result is that people will start to feel from you excellence in character. They will perceive from you excellence in the way you treat them and deal with them. The Prophet ﷺ said, My whole purpose for being sent was to perfect the example of noble character. To teach you excellence in character. Somebody might think, yeah, but he said all these prayers and all that. Exactly. Prayer is not a goal, it is a means. To humble yourself and realize who you are serving you're serving the one that has given you life and blessed you with so many things. So why don't you be that way to others? So your character will reflect your connection to the merciful, compassionate provider, maintainer and sustainer of all of existence. So the Qur'an gives us a system. He swears by the soul and he who created it. He inspired it. Each soul is born knowing things that will harm it or things that will benefit it and protect it from harm. Success eternally is for the one that purifies their soul. And failure is for one who turns their back on their soul. This is the reality of spirituality. So what does that mean? Know God, know His message, but you better know yourself. He said, I swear by the soul that takes account of itself. If you know many things about God, and you memorize many ayahs, but you're not looking at yourself, what kind of messed up things am I doing? What kind of offensive speech am I making to people? How are people being bothered by me? How can I fix that? How can I repair that? If you're not taking that path, it doesn't matter what you know about religion. Because you are not using religion for what it's meant for, to purify you. You him. the purpose of the Prophet So that's what we're doing. So in our organization, we don't want arrogant people who are rude and belligerent and selfish and spreading backbiting and slander and jealousy and all of those things. We don't want that in our organization because we are about striving toward excellence in character. Meaning, if someone advises me, Imam, you know, when you said that, it really bothered me. I shouldn't be like, well, I'm the Imam. How dare you try to tell me? I should be like, Astaghfirullah, I'm sorry, man, I didn't realize that. And everyone else should be that way. Good character, I go directly to the person I would like to talk to. I don't talk to so-and-so and so-and-so about that person. I go directly to the source. And when I'm trying to 
advise someone, I do it in a way that it's welcomed. Because I feel that there's a genuine concern for me. Not an arrogant desire to pick apart or control or to prove me wrong and themselves right about something. So this is makarim al-akhlaq. The whole purpose of the Prophet ﷺ. Cultivating the American Muslim identity. It's very strange. I've had so many, mostly young people, it's strange because they're Americans, all of them, born and raised here. They use the term American synonymously equal to non-Muslim. That my American friends. He means to say my non-Muslim friends. The problem with this is, I'm American and you came to sit and listen to the sermon from me. So if American equals non-Muslim, there's something very wrong happening right now. Because should not be non-Muslim giving the khutbah, right? I think we're all in agreement. So is it just the argument of the Imam or did the Qur'an and Sunnah tell us to develop an American Muslim identity? It did. And we will now explain that. The Qur'an tells us, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعْثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ Surely Allah has greatly blessed the believers by sending them a messenger from among them. Meaning what? He was an Arab like them. It would have been very strange if some Persian guy comes into Mecca talking about, I'm the final messenger of mankind, y'all better listen to me. I'm starting this message with you. Like, hold on. You don't even speak Arabic, right? Who are you? Right? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ We never sent any messenger to any nation except that messenger would talk to them in their own tongue. And the scholars of Tafsir said, they said, اللسان يعبر عن العرف والتقاليد The tongue represents who you are as a people. They call it حكايات عن القوم What we heard about those people, what they've said. وَإِلَىٰ عَادٍ أَخَاهُمْ هُدَىٰ قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ أُعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Allah says, We sent to Ad their brother Hud. Now was Ad Muslims what we learned from the story? Did they all become Muslim? No. But Allah called him their brother. In humanity. They are from the same place, born in the same area. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَاد said to Hud I mean Hud said to Ahad My people worship God alone there's no other deity besides Him won't you be mindful of your soul He said my people So the Quran teaches us اُدْعُوا إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوْعِظَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَةِ Call people to the path of God with wisdom, with gentle preaching, and discuss religion with them with that which is better. The commentators, the tafsir says, you have to have a, a good working relationship knowing who it is you're talking to. This is the wisdom. You have to know the hikmah, it means know who you're talking to. Have a working relationship with them where they feel comfortable to talk to you. If they see you as someone, by the way, America is full of people with many different shades and colors and speaking different accents. I come from the South. I can go on to New York and be like, this dude's a foreigner. I'm telling you, he's not from here. I mean, one time I went to Louisiana. Louisiana, I don't know how you say it. And I could not understand anybody. They're all Americans. What we're talking about is get to know people in general. Of course we'll look different, of course we may have a different accent when we talk. The point is knowing who they are, how they think, what's their attitude, what's their outlook, what do they really believe? Do I know really what they believe or maybe I need to learn from them? What do you believe before I start talking about something and I think I'm arguing a point that I don't need to be arguing? This is the wisdom. So what we're talking about here is how the Qur'an is telling us that we should engage where we have chosen to live as our land and these are our people in terms of our human family from Bani Adam and we are connected 
The souls that were put into us came from all from one source. The body we're in, where we live, it's one place. The general language is one language. We have to interact with people as one among them. Because why? That's what Allah said about the Prophet ﷺ and made it very special. He made that point to the Quraysh so they could appreciate it. So the next part, working toward an upright society. As we are worshipping God alone, striving toward excellence and character, we are working toward an upright society. So we work first here. We work in our hearts for our character. And then if we're doing that, people will like us and appreciate us. And then maybe we can influence and make an upright society. Shu'aib said, إِنْ أُرِيدُ إِلَّا الْإِصْلَاحَ مَسْتَطَعْتُ All I really want, Madian, my people, is to make this an upright society as best as I can. That's what he said. وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ لِيُهْلِكَ الْقُرَى بِظُلْمٍ وَأَهْلُهَا مُسْلِحُونَ Your Lord would never allow a place to be destroyed in injustice if the people in it were genuinely working to make it an upright society. This is an ultimate goal of prophethood. We want an upright society. So that leads us to our vision. So that's our mission. Our mission is in sincere worship of God, struggling and striving toward excellence and character, cultivating the American Muslim identity in order to establish an upright society or working toward an upright society. So what do we envision if we're working for this for many years and our community and your children and their children and their children's children, after we've been doing this for a while, what do we envision will be Charlotte, a harmonious, virtuous Charlotte community that appreciates the values and contributions of Islam and Muslims. That's what we expect to see. So the Quran tells us a harmonious, virtuous Charlotte community. The Quran says, Ta'awanu ala al birri wa taqwa wa la ta'awanu ala al ithmi wal udwan. Work together in harmony. To establish virtue and piety and righteousness. Do not work with people in order to establish sin or promote sin and aggression and enmity. So we will form with Muslims and non-Muslims allies that we work together for justice, for truth, for moral good character. But when somebody says, I would like to be your ally and I need you to join me in such and such cause, and that cause we know to be immoral or unjust or oppressive or aggressive towards any people, then we'll say, we can't join you on that one. We can respect you as human beings, but we will not join and take part in this particular program. If you have another program you'd like us to join you, no matter who you are, and that is morally upright and a good thing, establishing justice and truth, we'll join you. ثُمَّ كَانَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْمَرْحَمَةِ You see from the believers, this is Surah Al-Balad. It's telling you, أَنْتَ حِلٌّ بِهَذَا الْبَلَد It's not just a story about Prophet Muhammad. It's telling you, believer, wherever you are, if you want to live in a city, here's how you should establish yourself. And it talked about the spiritual path. It talked about, هَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجِدَيْنِ you know right and wrong. Work towards the spiritual path. Free the slaves. Take care of the orphans and the poor. You'll find from the believers, Tawasul bil Sabr. They worked harmoniously with each other to establish the virtue of patience and fortitude to help people in hard times. Watawasul bil Marhama. The believers they work together harmoniously to establish mercy, compassion, benevolence, kindness, and caring attitude towards others. This is the attitude. What do we, in, what do we, after we envision a harmonious, upright Charlotte community that appreciates the values and contributions of Islam and Muslims. We want to get to a day where if you ask anybody in the Charlotte streets, that as a result of the Charlotte Muslim Community Center, 
They will say, all I know about Muslims, they do great things, man. They work, they work on great projects. We had one in the city council. There was a state senator. There was a person on the school board. I met him. I saw him at there was this organization where they were do feeding the poor. They were uh, planting trees. They were cleaning up the streets. They're taking care of our city. We're very glad to have those Muslim people here. We appreciate them. See, many people misunderstood the ayah. هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا. This ayah comes three different times in the Quran. He is the one who sent his messenger to establish truth and justice and the guidance of God to mankind in its final, complete, preserved form. For the purpose of establishing this way as superior to other ways. And God is sufficient of a witness. There are some commentators of the Quran in our history, great scholars, who understood this mean to be a perpetual war in which we're fighting countries to take over their land and to show Islam is better than their religion. That is absolutely wrong. That understanding is false. The only reason why there were any wars is because people were aggressors towards the Muslims. We were told in the Quran, as we've talked about many times before, "Qatilu ladina yuqatiluna kum, wala taatadu. Inna Allaha la yuhibbu al-mu'tadin." Fight those who are fighting against you. Do not be the aggressor, because Allah does not love the aggressors. It's an ayah about jihad. Jahidu, qatilu. That was all it was about. If people are your aggressor, you don't fight them. The purpose of the war is not to establish the religion. The purpose of the war is to establish the means for Muslims to have peace and tranquility where they can live and thrive and teach others about their religion if people are willing to listen. But at the end of the day, لا إكراه في الدين There's no compulsion in religion. So what does this ayah mean? It means that if you are doing exactly what the ayah said, following the Prophet Muhammad, his example of guidance, then people will start to see from your religiosity a superior system than others that do not have those lofty values and qualities of guidance in them. They will see it by action and they will appreciate it. I have, I have someone in my own family told me, you know, Islam makes much more sense. And all this about character development, all of this thing about purifying a society from things like alcohol and oppression and gambling and, you know, uh, immoral, shameful things, those are all beautiful teachings. But, you know, I, I don't know how I could be a Muslim. So they're admitting. After coming to know it, it makes more sense and seems to be a better system than what we see is the modern religion without giving it a name. Because it has various names. And that is not helping the morality of the society. Anybody can see it. But you have to be an example. It's not about an argument. Nobody wants to hear you try to argue them. They want to see by the fruits of your words and that your actions are in agreement to your words that you are doing what's best for the world around you and that's the conclusion of this sermon the prophet sallallahu said ahabbu nasi ilallahi anfa'uhum linnas the most beloved people to allah is the most beneficial to those people that are around them in another hadith khairun nas the best among people anfa'uhum linnas the most beneficial to those around them so that is why we are seeking a harmonious, virtuous Charlotte community that appreciates the values and contributions of Islam and the Muslims. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Beloved, merciful, compassionate, provider, sustainer, creator of the heavens and the universe, Lord and King and ruler of all, we humbly ask you to enlighten our hearts and minds to be 
having a deep sense of inspiration and motivation from the Qur'an that you revealed to the Prophet Ya Allah, make the example of the Prophet beloved to us. Make it something we desire to follow and embody in our lives. Ya Allah, give the success to the Muslim Community Center in that we have established our mission and vision in accordance with the example of your prophets and the guidance of your holy book. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us those who truly seek to struggle and strive, realizing that this life is not eternal, it is not an abode that we seek to maintain. Ya Allah, make us of those that will inherit the paradise of those who worked for it. Ya Allah, help us to be those who truly seek to be of you and of your messenger by word and by deed, by skill set, by time and by wealth. That we are giving all of that in sacrifice for you and for your sake alone. Ya Allah, remove from us corruption of arrogance and tyranny and corruption of bad character in all of its forms. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us the means by which truth and justice and goodness is established in the world and oppression and tyranny and evil is removed from the world. Ya Allah, we ask you to send your peace and blessings and mercy upon your final messenger Muhammad wa aqnas salat.